with the economy growing well below trend at the moment, and that's expected to continue uh, at least through to the second half of this year, the unemployment rate by definition will have to trend higher. I think it's up for the debate, the magnitude of the increase. We think it'll end the year around 4.5%. The RBA is a little bit under, under that. But something around that looks about right, given what we're seeing in terms of economic growth. So does that mean that February's number is a bit of an anomaly for that trend? Well, it does. It, it looks an anomaly given the unemployment rate from the middle of last year was trending up from 3.5% to 4.1%. We thought it would tick down a little bit in February, but not by the magnitude of what we got. As I said, we really need to see now another print just to be sure of what's going on. And it does make it hard for policymakers in an environment of really choppy labour force numbers to work out exactly what is going on out there, given we haven't really seen sort of swings in the monthly data like we've got at the moment outside of a, a negative economic shock. The language from the Reserve Bank Governor shifted slightly uh, in their note mm. this week after their, their meeting for February. Is that significant, uh, you know, a, a couple of words changing? Like, how significant is that? Look, it was significant for us in, term, in the markets to try to sort of work out where the RBA's head's at at the moment and where the board sort of thinks the balance of risk lies. Uh, last month, they had explicitly in the statement that the board does not rule out a further increase in interest rates. That was removed uh, this week. But then in the press conference, the governor said, we're not ruling anything in or out. So the way you kind of work out what that change really means is that the RBA behind closed doors would think that they're unlikely to raise rates again, which means by definition, if you're not going to raise rates again, the next move should be down. But they don't want to communicate that explicitly at the moment because they're still not sure about that in terms of the timing. It would be their base case, but because they're not 100% sure, they don't want to give what I would say is get people's hopes up the rate relief is coming later this year. We think it will arrive. The markets have got that priced, but the Reserve Bank is not at the point yet where they're willing to say that. What's your thoughts on when that timing will uh, take place and, and how aggressively they will cut this year? Look, we've got September penciled in there for the first uh, interest rate cut, and we've got quite a few in there once, once they get going. Um, a lot will depend on how the labour market is evolving. And again, that's why the figures that we got out yesterday have really put a lot of people in the market just unsure of what's going on because they just looked in incredibly strong. But if it turns out to be the case that the unemployment rate is on a firm upward trend, inflation is back to target or there or thereabouts on a six month annualised basis and growth is pretty weak, which is it is at the moment, then the RBA should want to take policy away from its restrictive setting to something that looks more like neutral or normal. And we think that is somewhere around two and a half to three percent, which means you'd be looking at around 150 basis points of cuts from where we, are, where, where we are at the moment. And we think we might get that over a 12 month period, but that is a pretty aggressive uh, cutting profile that we have uh, as our base case. And the market's got about half that. The market's looking for around 75 basis points of cuts over about a 12 month period from about Q3 of this year. So what gives CBA the confidence to have that more aggressive view? Well, we think that basically the neutral rate is around that level. Um, and if you look at debt servicing and the amount of um, household income that is going to service, uh, servicing debt at the moment, it's at a record high and it will continue to drift higher over the next six months as fixed rates continue to roll off. And that ratio will only start to come down when the RBA cuts the cash rate. And the cash rate needs to go down to around 25 to 3% to get those mortgage repayments as a share of household income back to something that we think looks a little bit more normal. Um, it's also worth thinking as well that pre-pandemic, we had very low rates in Australia and they weren't at an emergency setting. In fact, it's, I think it's easily forgotten that the cash rate was just 0.75% pre-pandemic. Now, we won't be going back to those levels. But we think we're going down quite a bit from where we are now once the central bank starts easing in order to keep the economy on what we would say is an even even keel. Of course, we closely watch what happens in the US mm. and, you know, six months ago, sort of the forecast was that they would cut this month. Obviously, yep. data changed and they haven't cut. Uh, and the expectation is that uh, they will cut mid-year. Mm. Is there a, a potential scenario, though, where we find that rates are cut in Australia before the US? Yeah, look, it, it's possible. Uh, it's not what the markets have got priced, um, but it is possible if, if, for example, the US consumer continues to hold up as it is at the moment, and the US household sector has been a lot stronger 
in the Australian household sector over the last 12 to 18 months because the US consumer has not had the income squeeze from higher rates and higher tax paid than what our households have had here. And that's meant that household consumption here has been much weaker than in the US. Now, if, for example, the situation was to stay that way in the US where the consumer holds up, the Fed hasn't made further progress on getting inflation back to target, and their labour market stays very tight, then the timing of when the Fed might cut rates could continue to be pushed out. And yes, it's possible our central bank ends up moving first. It's, it's not what we think is likely to happen, but of course we're open-minded to that um, situation playing out. More people in work is potentially good news for the budget, as Jim Chalmers mm -hmm. sort of prepares that sort of two months out from here. But how challenging is the tightrope that he's trying to manage, I guess, in terms of um, ensuring that people are doing okay in the cost of living crisis, but not sort of spiking inflation any further? Yeah, it's a, it's a balancing act because if inflation is driving problems with the cost of living, and you want to help people out by giving them income support, that puts upward pressure on demand and then in turn prices, which is really what the central bank is trying to slow, which is the rate of price growth in the economy. And so far the government, um, the, the, the stimulus they've put into the economy has really been very small and targeted and it's tried to actually bring down measured inflation. And by all accounts, if we get anything in the budget um, in terms of stimulus to the household sector, it will look like that again. But we do already have the already legislated tax cuts um, to come in, which will give a little bit of income support to, to households. But I think at the moment, um, the, the, the government is would, would just welcome seeing further progress on inflation. And they would probably also welcome seeing interest rates actually come down uh, later on this year because you know, they know that there's a lot of home borrowers out there who are struggling under the weight of higher mortgage repayments. Gareth, Ed, so great to speak to you. Thanks so much for your time. It's nice to be here. Cheers.